Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's Click Data webinar. Today, we're going to talk about how to create Google Analytics and insightful dashboards. One of the great parts about Click Data is we do collect to any data, anywhere. And hopefully, today, you'll understand how you can create better dashboards using Click Data. A few words about Click Data. We're the world's first 100% cloud-based business intelligence solution. Why that's important is because everything's on the cloud now and almost every application has the ability to connect to each other. You need a solution that can actually do this. Click Data was founded in 2009. We have offices in Canada, US, as well as in Europe and France. Click Data is on almost every continent. We have dedicated partners within Latin America, Asia, and Australia. Some interesting facts. We're currently managing over 1 million KPIs. These are customers who are using Click Data at a level of 1 million KPIs to manage their business. We have over 100,000 data sets and we publish over 100 dashboards per hour. These are people leveraging Click Data, its ability to connect to any data anywhere. We also have the honor of being four and a half out of five stars from G2 Crowd, as well as a 94% recommendation rate from Cactera. I'm gonna summarize Click Data in four easy steps. Connect to any data, anywhere. Upload it to our data warehouse, which allows you to have a dedicated data warehouse where you can prepare that data any way you'd like, join, merge, cleanse and then run it through our business analytics and visualization engine and create stunning actionable dashboards that you can share with anyone and anywhere. At this point in time, I'm going to go ahead and turn the presentation over to Anna, who is one of our uh, business uh, professionals in uh, services analytics, and she will be running the rest of the demo. I'll touch base at the end of the demo to make sure everybody understands that how to reach out to us as well as to better re, uh, uh, share this, this, uh, this presentation. Thank you, Thank Rob. You, yeah. Thank you, Rob. Um, so hi, I'm Anna. I'm a business analyst at Click Data. I'm based in France. And uh, my role at Click Data is to help you make the most, most out of the platform and help you build effective dashboards so you can make better decisions, you and your clients. So today we're going to talk about Google Analytics, which is one of the most popular uh, website analysis tool over there. And that um, I have uh, some experience with um, having been an in-house SEO, in-house marketer in my previous jobs. So today I hope that I can share a bit of that knowledge of the tool with you and show you how Click Data can help you build um, efficient an efficient dashboard uh, that will help you um, that you can tailor to really your needs uh, for Google Analytics data. Uh, so we're going to connect to uh, GA first, then we're going to create and link widgets to each other, use formulas, and do a bit of the more advanced stuff in Click Data. Uh, we are going to uh, show you the, the new bullet charts as well. That's a widget that we uh, released with the last product push in February. And lastly, we're going to see how to copy dashboards, rebind them with new data sets and uh, win some time. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Just a sec. Here we go. Okay, so I, th I hope you can see my screen well. This is my uh, Click Data uh, demo account. So you can see we are here in learning Click Data. Um, we're going to focus today mostly on those, those two areas, which are um, the data connection um, and, um, and uh, the data storage and the dashboard side. So for those of you who are not so familiar with Click Data yet, um, these are really the two workspaces we're working on. We're not going to cover these today. Um, this is going to be done in a, a future webinar. So um, <clears throat> we are going to look at this dashboard. Let me show you in uh, the whole version. We are going to, uh, to go through these different widgets and I'm going to show you how to build this. So first things first, we need to import data to click data and the data should come from Google Analytics, right? So we're going to add a connection to Google Analytics. Um, I've had some connections already, but I'm going to create, show you how to create a new connection. So these are all the connectors that are available at Click Data to connect to your data. You can connect to different types of data like um, databases, for example, or to different uh, storage um, tools. 
Today we're going to focus on analytical, analytic applications and um, Google Analytics, analytics for the most. Okay, going to name this. Um, I'm going to authorize the connection first. So what is happening here? We're going to Google accounts and uh, we are going to give the authorization to Google accounts to send data to click data. So I'm choosing my account here, allowing the connection. And here we go, we have an authorized connection. Clicking on next will take us to the next step, which is retrieving the data from Google Analytics. So I'm going to choose my website here and the period I want my data to be, um, to be um, aggregated on. So I'm going to look at a daily period and start from Jan, for example. Clicking on next will take me to the actual data I can get from uh, Google Analytics. Today, we're going to focus on building a dashboard that would look at uh, traffic of our website and um, the performance of it. So as you can see, Google Analytics provides a lot of different reports, which are very similar to what you can uh, find in the, in the tool itself, in the GA itself. We're going to build a traffic report today. So I'm going to select this one and select a few dimensions, user type, medium. <clears throat> and you can see you can choose from multiple metrics as well. I'm going to check bounces, for example, um, because I want to look at my bounce rates. Page views, I need that. Um, yeah, let's go like this. So we have um, a preview here of the data set. Clicking on next will take us to the, to the last step of the importing. I'm going to give a name to this data set. And here we go. We can then click on next and the importing is starting. From here, you can actually also uh, schedule a uh, refresh, an automated refresh. So if I push this button here, my data set will be refreshed on a daily basis, which is uh, what I need here because I'm looking at daily data, right? I don't need to uh, import every hour. I'm gonna run this in background and as you can see, it's loading now. So I've prepared this data set before, so we don't have to wait for the data to be loaded. Um, it's this data set here, which is called Photoblog because I'm actually connecting to uh, GA to retrieve data from, uh, from a photo blog. So we have here the columns that we're we are going to use. Start date and end date are the same because we are looking at the daily uh, range, date range. And we have uh, as a dimension, we have country, medium, user type, and then in the metrics we have sessions, users, page views, and bounces. All of these will help us uh, create uh, ratios and um, 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 calculate the uh, bounce rates, for example. Okay, so now we're set with our data set here. So we're going to the dashboard side now. So I've prepared the dashboard already, so we don't need to go through all of the steps of the creation. I'm going to edit it so we can look at it and I can show you some tricks here on how to um, build an, uh, a very um, performant dashboard. The dashboard um, is showing uh, account of sessions, account of users, sessions over time, sessions by medium, sessions by country for now, and all of these widgets, visualizations if you prefer, are actually filtered by this filter, which is selecting, uh, which is um, giving us the ability to pick a date range. If I go to the properties, I can show you how it looks. We have uh, different presets here. I can add one very quickly. Maybe I want to see how it's uh, how my data is uh, behaving over time. Let's add last three months and also last six months. I really like to analyze my data on a wide range of uh, on a wide period. I think it's really uh, easy then to understand what's happening. And I'm going to select my last month as a default period. Okay, I'm going to save this. And now I have my four presets here. So if I choose six months, for example, you can see that all my data is changing. Okay, so uh, I wanna show you a little trick here on um, formatting the dates uh, we have here in the horizontal axis. This is a question that we often get from our users. So I wanna share with you how you can enhance that, um, that uh, formatting. So here we are in the properties of our widgets. On the format tab, I can uh, format almost every 
item here on my widget. I'm going to go to the horizontal axis. And here in the format area, I can say this is actually a date. And you will see it already looks much better, doesn't it? I'm going to choose a more advanced type of, um, of format here. Maybe this one will look better. Yes, so it's already much easier to read. And also I can choose to show different uh, interval units. I'm not, um, I can see that this is very crowded, right? So I'm going to uh, choose a seven day period. And if I save this, and if you look at three last months, you can see that it's now very easy to see how my um, visitors and my sessions, um, my sessions, um, um, performed over time, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so now we have a very quick overview of how many uh, sessions and users went to my website, how they, um, how they, uh, they uh, the, the volume, um, how the volume um, evolved over time. And here in this section, I've built two uh, charts which look at the origins of my uh, visitors. So for once, the medium, so where does the traffic come from? And in terms of, um, of uh, marketing sources, and then um, <clears throat> a map that shows where the people come from, actually, in terms of geographic. These two widgets are very simple. I'm not going to look into this very much further. And I'm going to the next uh, section, which look at the behavior of those users. And this is actually where we are going to dive in a bit more into what click data can do and uh, why it's so powerful. You can see here that we have a metric that looks at page views per session. So what does that metric um, tell us? It shows that for in, in, in average for each session, uh, people look at 1.8 pages. So that's not so much, right? This is an important metric to know uh, because um, the more page views are, um, uh, the, much, the higher the number, the better it is, right? You want people to look at a lot of pages on your website. <laughs> so this uh, metric is a calculated metric. We um, are using a formula here, which is actually looking at different widgets that are present on the dashboard. So you can see it's looking at the widget for page views and the widget for sessions, and it does a division between those two. So where do they come from? Page views are here, sessions are here. You can see that this widget here is a bit grayed out. This is actually an invisible widget. You can see that the toggle here is set to invisible. And this is a very convenient way to add some, uh, some cool um, formulas to your dashboard. So you can just add some widgets that will um, give you some indicators and just not display them to your users because what you want in the end is build a formula. So I'm going to show you how to build formulas from, from scratch. We want to, in the behavior, to look at bounce rate as well. Bounce rate shows um, how many sessions um, from your visitors um, had just one page view against the whole sessions. So again, we need to do a, a division here, looking at the sum of the bounces divided by the sum of the sessions. So I've prepared a widget here looking at the sum of bounces. So it's really the same as the other one, bounces sum, and it's called number indicated bounces. So I'm going to use this widget here, copy it. So I have the same style for my new widget, my new KPI. And instead of looking at data and counting sums, uh, sessions, sorry, I'm going to change this to say this is based on a formula. Here I can now write a formula. And I'm going to choose from the existing widgets on my dashboard. I'm going to choose the value of the bounce um, widget and the value of the session widget. Here we go. So now we get a nice, a nice division. It's this, this is the bounce rate. Uh, because I want this to be a percentage, I'm going to multiply it by 100. So here we go. You can see now we have 79% of bounce rate, of bounces, sorry. I'm going to save this. And in the format, I'm going to say this is a percentage. That looks good. And I'm going to call it bounce rate. So we know what we're talking about. And in the properties, I'm going to rename that widget as well. Okay. 
good. So now my widget is, um, is, is uh, ready. And what I want to see with this bounce rate is actually how it behaves against a target. The, bound, the lower the bounce rate, the better the, the um, uh, involvement of your users against your website, right? So we're going to use one of the new, uh, this new uh, widget that we've uh, just released. It's the bullet chart. It's a very cool widget that helps you look at a, a value against a target. So what we're gonna do here is actually uh, use a formula as well to display the value. I'm going to, uh, rather than build the same calculation as we did just before, this is actually an option as well, I can actually um, <clears throat> refer to that widget that we just created. I'm going to my widgets here, picking this up. It's the same number, it's okay. And so now I have my bar here showing the same number. Uh, the goal for my targets, for my, sorry, the, for my bounce rates, let's say it's 40%. So my, um, my target is here now, and I'm going to format this a bit so it looks better. Let's say the target, maybe I could make it a bit thicker and red. Okay, so we see it a bit better. Here we go. And um, the uh, label here, I can change it. Let's say maybe I can add the target here so we know what we're talking about. I don't need a subtitle, okay. And I'm going to change that uh, axis here to a percentage. So it makes sense, no decimals, okay. So now we have um, <clears throat> an interaction between those two widgets. Whenever this number changes, this one will change as well. So in order to drill down in the data and to really understand what is happening on my website, I wanna build a last uh, chart, which is actually a bar chart and that will look at the user type. Um, what do we need, to, what do you mean by user type? We're looking at um, uh, if the, the, the visitors are returning visitors or new visitors. So I'm going to pick my, um, my data source and add in the values, the sessions, sum them up, and I want to have in the series, the user type. So now I have here in red, the number of new visitors, and in, in blue, in, a, in a, a black, sorry, the number of returning visitors. I'm going to format that a bit, so it looks better and it's easier to understand. So we have user types, subtype is not necessarily here. Um, I don't need the label. I'm going to add uh, the values to this uh, to these two metrics. This is actually white. We don't see it now. Okay, and I want to have the percentage actually. So let's keep it like this. So 100% from this and 100% from this series. This doesn't help me really. I'm I want to see how they um, sum up against each other. So let's go to the vertical axis and change this to a stacked bar chart. And I want to make this 100% stacked bar chart. Okay, so now we have an interesting uh, KPI here. We can see that um, more than 90% of our uh, visitors are actually new visitors. So the thing is that this might, this might be interesting, but it really gets um, more value if I'm able to uh, drill down into the data and see if, for example, my uh, organic visitors are mostly new visitors or returning visitors, and if it's different from different mediums. So I'm going to add a filter to this widget and say that um, it should be filtered on, you remember that uh, widget that we had that was looking at mediums? Uh, different mediums and session by medium. I'm going to filter this widget based on what is selected on the other widgets. So let's select the column here. It's, oops, it's medium equal to an input, uh, sorry, uh, formula. And in the formula, I can refer to any widget on my dashboard. So I'm going to this widget and I'm going to pick my pie chart. And I'm going to say that the selected category over there should be the one that is filtering my widget here. I'm going to check, nothing is selected over there, so that's fine. Okay, I need to toggle my uh, filter now to orange stages so that uh, it gets filtered only if there is a selection in that pie chart. Okay, let's save this. 
and align it. And now every time I'm going to select anything here on this widget, it's going to interact with this, uh, this other widget. So let's select the referral um, medium, oops, medium, sorry. So we have 93% uh, here of new visitors. If I select organic, you can see it's a bit less. And if I select the uh, direct traffic, I see that uh, the new visitors are actually uh, a lesser percentage. So this is how you can build interactions between your widgets. You can actually interact with all, make all the widgets interact with each other, which really will get you to a point where you will be able to drill down very deeply into the data, looking, for example, at um, the, pre the precise bounce rates of referral uh, sessions uh, that are coming from Canada. Or maybe you can also see how user type behaves against that bounce rate. And that way you can build a very, very powerful dashboard that will help you understand the performance of, um, of your website in just a few um, widgets, but that all are all interconnected. So once you're happy with your dashboard, um, you could uh, think of maybe create a suite of dashboards and link them together. Let's say, make some, for example, with, if you create another dashboard for Facebook um, analytics or for LinkedIn analytics, you could build um, a navigation through simple buttons. Let's see how that looks. Um, we have a button here that's called Facebook. In the interactions, I can say that when this is clicked, I want to display another dashboard and just need to select dashboard from my existing dashboards already. Um, so once the dashboard is created, I can share this with my clients, with my colleagues. In the properties of the dashboard, we have uh, what we call the live link. The live link is uh, just a URL where you can find uh, the dashboard. So let's open this so you can see. So this is our dashboard, fully um, interactive. So your users that are going to view the dashboard are going to be able to drill down with it, uh, to work with it, sorry, and to analyze your data as well. So that means that uh, it will help you build a dashboard for uh, users without having to open them your Google Analytics account, which is actually pretty cool. And you will enable them to drill down the data as you would like to. Okay. So once we're uh, finished with the dashboards, we want to maybe replicate the same dashboard, let's say for another data source. Maybe uh, you have different clients which you, with whom you want to, uh, to share the same type of dashboards. So I'm going to show you click, click quickly how to do that in a few clicks. I'm going to select the dashboard and duplicate this. Okay, so not, that's the duplicated dashboard. And I'm going to rebind this dashboard to another data set. So let me show you quickly. I have a second data set here, which is uh, looking at another website. It's this one. It's really the same columns. It's coming from, from uh, Google Analytics as well. And I'm going to choose this one as the source behind my second dashboard. So here in the action panel, I can go to rebind data click on it and choose the data source to be replaced. So from the photo blog, March uh, 18, I'm going to choose the other one, which is Danube, Jan 18. And now you can see that all the columns have been populated with the columns that are uh, based, that are used in my, in my second, um, second data source. I can save now. And if I go to my dashboard now, you can see that the numbers are really different. It's, it's a website with less traffic. And in a very few clicks, I've been able to um, duplicate my dashboard um, across different clients. Okay, so the presentation is now um, uh, is now finished. So I hope you enjoyed what you saw. I hope that you learned a few a few things. I'm going to hand over to Rob, um, and um, hopefully we'll see you in the next webinars. Thank you, Anna. That was wonderful. We learned a lot. And some of the things that we did talk about or that you demonstrated were uh, something that was new to some, familiar to others. But one of the things we want to realize, let everybody know, is we will be publishing this webinar recorded on our website. You can also reach out to any of those contacts there. Additionally, you will be receiving an email that talks about if you would like to get your own personal demo 
You can also talk about doing a discovery call or anything else you might need to know so you can better understand how Click Data and Google Analytics can make things easier and also provide much more actionable data. At this time, we're going to close out, and I want to thank everybody for your time, and thank you for watching.